And here we go. We're about to start. Kang Kandasami. And this will be the final bout of a great weekend here in the foothills of Cali, Colombia. We've had a lot of excitement here this weekend. We've had a 15-year-old make the final eight in the women's side. We've had a 41-year-old who's ranked 114th in the world win the gold medal. We've seen the men's field just to completely explode, implode in the round of 64 where we just lost more than half of the top 16 and just completely opened up the field. And on the women's side, it was the opposite where we had most of the favorites making it through. And it's indicative that we see number two versus number three right now. Here we go. So we're going through the usual feeling out period in the first minute. It's always the question as to whether they make it for the full 60 seconds for the P yellow cards. Looks like the fencers are trying to score, but and avoid that. And they do. Kong with the attack. Interesting. Like it's very interesting how they wait just before the uh, the minute was through. Ali. Asked me, looked back at her coach, put the hand up, saying, "I was, I think I was trying to get to the uh, one-minute P yellow card, but she didn't, didn't accomplish the goal." Hey, hey. Uh, wow, that was a beauty. Kandasmi uh, fainted high and went for the uh, toe. I don't know when that 60 seconds is up, but it's got to be getting soon. Uh, but it's moot. Oh, Kandasami scores. Hey. Kong went for the attack. Wow! Hey. Kandasami ducked underneath it, causing Kong to miss, scoring on the counterattack. And Kandasami, I think I'm six feet tall. I think she's taller than me. She basically ducked down and made herself invisible. pushing, now retreating, saying let's let time run out, go to the break. That's what it appears is going to happen here. Uh, so, we didn't have a lot of action in that period. 
but it's fair to say that the two touches Kandasamy scored were somewhat spectacular. One was a toe touch, a beauty, and the other one was that she was able to just duck into a little box and cause Kong to miss while she scored in a counterattack. There's the toe touch. Let's see if this is the one where she ducked. Look at that. <laughs> Amazing. So maybe if Kong sees that, maybe, ooh, there's a nice one right to the arm. Maybe Kong will try that, provoke Kandasami to do that duck again and try to go second intention and pick up her blade. And, uh, Here we go with the second period. So this year, Kandasami in the Grand Prix has been killing it. She was third in Budapest in March. She was second in Doha in January. So she's having one great year. And uh, Kang, no slouch at all, double touch, uh, took third at the Grand Prix in Doha. So three podiums for Kandasami. In the Grand Prix double. Kong is going straight at it. She's not trying the second intention, trying to draw at Kadasami's attack so far. Uh, oh, that time she went straight, one. went to a different target. Instead of going high, she went for the leg. Watch this. She fainted high and went for the thigh. Okay. Some bait into the toe. She was successful earlier in the first period. Okay. So there's a little attack. Let's watch this attack to the shoulder, yeah, pretty much. And we see a two-touch lead for Kong. It's our first differential of two touches so far. And just like that, that's going to force Kandasami to have to try to take some risks and push a little bit. Up until now, it's been mostly Kong taking the risks, pushing. And um, now, with a two-touch deficit, Kandasami has no option but to push a little bit. I mean, she can sit back and double for a while if that's what she wants to do, but that's not going to get her any closer. Again, fainted to the toe. So, does she follow that up with something after fainting to the toe? We've seen that a couple times. And while she was planning, Kandasami, what she was going to do and where she was going to faint, a straight attack to that same target, sort of the inside of the shoulder by Khan, who's opening the score up right now, 7-4.
Okay, Kandasumi has to push. Wow, and while she's pushing, I think it's the same target, the shoulder target. Let's see if we see the replay here. Nope. So, eight to four, doubled Kandasumi up has Kong. And things have changed here in this period. Dramatically. I think if I'm Kandasami, I let time run out and regroup for the next period and not let the score get further away from her. But unfortunately, she did. Look, the attack is short. Wow, Kong is able to angle her body back, causing this attack to fall short to the leg by about six inches, and she scores in the counterattack. And that's against the longer fencer, too. How about that? Well, now Kandasami said that's enough. A little time run out. Speak to the coach, get a drink. Maybe not. Maybe yes. No more touches. 9 4 is as far as we should let it go before the break. And she does. Wow, so looking at Kong's face, at um, Kandasami's face, she looks a little bit uh, puzzled and flustered right now while she's speaking to the coach, like, what just happened here? So, coach says, you three times, he put his finger up three times, he did the same action, got a hit. So, at this point, uh, Kong is really in the driver's seat here. I mean, that's a huge lead. And Kandasami has to start taking risks. We're in the third and final period, and she has to attack. And she has to push. And the question is, what will Kong do? Will she retreat and give up ground? Will she be very active on defense and try to provoke Kandasami? Will she attack to that shoulder, which seems to be the target of choice for her, uh, for Kong? Um, let's see what happens. We're ready to start the third period. See, that's the target right there. You can see that's where she's hitting. That seems to be the target again. Over and over again is that shoulder target, the inside of the right shoulder. Okay, so here we are with the final three minutes of the Cali Grand Prix here in the gold medal bout between Kong and Kandasami. Okay, Kandasami finally, for the first time, she went since the first period. She fainted a few times, let's faint. And she went for the knee, not the toe. Okay. So that's a good start. 19 seconds in. That's a good double for Kong. Doubles are her best friend right now. She provoked the action. That was probably a reactionary double by Kandasami. She really shouldn't do that anymore. Oh, boy. And while she was setting it up, Kong said, while, while you're thinking about what you're going to do, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. And she attacked to that shoulder again. And regains a five-touch lead. Twelve to six. That's an easy double for Kong. She's two touches away from the goal. Watch Kandasmi attack. Just a double. Kandasmi has to take the blade if she can to get inside. No. Oh, Kong attacked from way at a distance. 
and somehow was able to put the light on. And she's one away from the gold, way out of distance, and scored on the second remise, almost turning herself upside down. Why you go? Got to give Khan credit. She's going for the win here. She's just trying to attack and, and to, to win on her action. champion no doubt about it she was the best fencer here she earned it number two ranked in the world and she was clearly the best fencer here a fitting champion and your winner Kong Man Wai Vivian of Hong Kong wins in Cali and a tremendous wonderful silver medal for Kandasami of France. She looks upset, no one likes to lose, but taking silver medal at a Grand Prix is a wonderful result. Let's watch. Again to the high line. And there's your winner. Let's see the smile. There it is. She pretty much dominated this bout after an early, it was sort of 50-50. Once she got the lead, uh, she dominated. There's your winner, Kong of Hong Kong. And we'll be back with the medal ceremony shortly. Don't you dare go away. <laughs> 